Topic 1.1.4 Physical activity as part of your healthy active lifestyle Principles of training In this topic we will be looking at the following The principles of training and their definitions and how each principle is applied within a training session Ok then, so when following a training programme there are a number of training principles that need to be applied in order for it to be effective and these are what are known as the principles of training the reason we have these is to make sure that any goal that we set out before undertaking training is best achieved through the methods that we use. The principles are as follows. The first one is individual needs or differences. Then we have specificity, progressive overload, the fit principle, rest and recovery, and finally reversibility. So if we look at individual needs or differences, and this is defined as matching training to the requirements of an individual and by this we mean that every athlete has different needs and therefore they should have their own individual program that reflect these. This should, in, should, this should take into account your bodybuilding and fitness levels, your sporting role and your aims. So if I were to compare the training I undertake in order to play for my local uh, Saturday football team it would be very much different and to that that Stephen Gerrard undertakes at Liverpool because we're playing at um, you know, different levels, we have different fitness levels um, he plays in centre midfield, I play at, at full back so we're very much different as players and therefore we need different fitness programmes Next training pr principle is specificity and this is matching training to the requirements of an activity so every sport has its own fitness requirements and we need to select training methods that will enhance each of these fitness requirements. So if you think back about um, the fitness components you've just been looking at for health related exercise and skill related fitness, you've seen that different activities have different requirements in terms of those fitness components. So it's important that we use the training methods, whether it be weight training, continuous training, etc. to reflect uh, requirements of that particular activity. So I would not train for a marathon the same as I would train for a game of squash because the requirements of both activities are completely different. Next principle is progressive overload and this is to gradually increase the amount of overload so that fitness gains occur but without potential for injury. So by overload we mean training getting higher um, and working harder than you normally do in order to improve fitness and by doing it progressively this means we're doing it bit by bit and the way we actually apply progressive overload is through the FIT principle and FIT stands for frequency, intensity, time and type so basically it means making your training you know, more difficult, more challenging because if you used to keep doing this program it eventually get easier and to be going into the gym, if you're lifting weights and lifting the same ones, you're like, this is, this is too easy. You won't be getting any, any particular benefit from it. So just making sure that when you are training, you add a little bit more weight every time or you're running a little bit faster. Um, but making sure you don't overdo it or do too much that it would actually cause injury to yourself. So if we look in more detail at the FIT principle, the first F uh, stands for frequency. And this is how often we train. So we should train at least three times a week to improve our fitness. To allow for the body to recover and adapt to training, sessions should be spread out over the week. So if we're looking at training at least three times a week, to show progressive overload, we might start training four times a week or five times a week. Intensity, it's dead easy, this is how hard we train. We will only get fitter if we work our body systems hard enough to make them adapt. However, we shouldn't put our bodies at risk of injury by working too hard. So when we are training, we're putting our body under a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of strain, and this can cause a little bit of damage, particularly to, to your muscles, and they adapt to this pressure and the stress that you put them on by growing back bigger and stronger, and as a result, we look more muscular for it. So... If we train at a certain intensity, our body will eventually get used to it. So to show progressive overload, we must then train harder. So this can be done by lifting heavier weights, or running faster on the treadmill, 
or swimming for longer if we're in the swimming pool. The first T then is for time and this is obviously how long we train for. To improve aerobic fitness, training sessions should last longer, lasting at least 20 minutes to achieve real benefit. So a really easy way of showing progressive overload here is that is to instead of training for 2 minutes, we then train for 25 minutes, 30 minutes, etc. And keep training for longer. The final T is for type, and this is what kind of training we, we, we do. So we should analyse our sports and all the fitness and skills we need. These should then be developed through different types of activity in our training programme. So this could be weight training, could be continuous training, fat lift training, etc. Rest and recovery then. We've already talked about you know, our body being put under strain, under pressure when we're training. Um, more so than it's normally used to. So we need to have rest. And this is the period of time allotted to recovery. And recovery is the time required to repair damage to the body caused by training or competition. So it's important that we, we include rest as part of our training program to allow recovery and adaptation to occur. So I'll use the example of the weight training again. If I'm lifting weights, I'm doing a weight session, I'm going to hurl some of the muscle fibres in my body. And as a result, I need to make sure that I've got sufficient time to repair the cells so that these training gains I'm trying to achieve have time to occur. Reversibility then. This is any adapt adaptation that takes place as a consequence of training will be reversed when you stop training. So in essence, it's if you don't use it, you lose it. In the picture, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the picture on the left is in his heyday when he was training frequently and you can see how muscular and how ripped he looks. And then the picture on the right is a more recent picture where he stopped training and you can obviously see for yourself the difference in his physique. So as soon as you stop training, if you think about if you play football or netball during the off-season when you've no games, when you start training again or you have your first match, it's really difficult. You always feel sick after your training session because you're nowhere near as fit as what you used to be during the season when you were playing week after week. And it's important you think of it about reasons why you might stop training. So you could be at the end of your season, where there's no games during the summer. Um, or it could be down to injury. If you're injured and you break your leg or something like that and you can't train, that will obviously have a knock-on effect on your levels. Okay then, so what now? You want to re-watch this video as many times as you need to so you fully understand the topic. You need to then fill in all the boxes on your flip learning mat. Make sure you provide detailed notes and you know that they'll be useful for you when it comes to, to, to revising. And finally, you will apply this knowledge in next week's lesson. So make sure you remember to bring your flip learning mat in with you.